continue with Genesis chapter 20. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. In chapter 20, we're, we're shifting scenes now, right? Chapter 19 talked about Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah and kind of what happened after that. And uh, as far as I can recall, I think that's really the last we hear about Lot and his descendants, right? That he had you know, babies with his daughters and they kind of got their family tree going. But now we're going back to Abraham. He's kind of the star of the, of the show right now, all right? So it says Abraham is uh, left from where he was living and traveled over to a place called Gerar, Right? And, uh, and now in the second verse, it says that he uh, tells people that, that his wife, Sarah, is his sister. Now, I've already heard that before. If you recall, a, a few chapters ago, if we had something similar happen, right? That uh, Abraham went into Egypt and, and told them that his wife was his sister because he was afraid that they were going to kill him to get his wife. And so here, the, the Pharaoh at that time took, took uh, Sarah in and then, then, but then found out just in time that really she was a married woman, and so then he, he threw them all out of the city. So, so now you would have thought, maybe he would have learned from this, all right, but now we see it actually repeating itself. And what I would point out is that, you know, what it shows is that no matter who somebody is, all right, I mean, they're blessed by God, all right, here they, they've been visited by angels and so forth, yet people are still human, all right, some people have their, their fears, their, their lack of faith at times, all right, they make mistakes, so this is what, what we see, right? That basically the, the story here spells out good things and not so good things about some of these people, right? I mean, certainly we read in the last chapter of odd things happening with Lot's family, right? So again, this is something Abraham already went through this, and yet here he went to another city, and again he's telling them, oh, she, she's my sister. So because again, he's afraid that they're going to kill him to try to get his, his wife. But of course what happens then is that Abimelech, who's the king, goes, oh, okay, she, she's a single woman, let's bring her in. And, you know, she can be part of the harem here. You know, she can be part of the, the women who I keep here in, in the palace. Right? So that's the first two verses. And then in the third, but now, again, God is not pleased with this because he has, he has plans for, for Abraham and Sarah. They're about to have, have a baby in the, in the next year. And I'm thinking whether she was already expecting or not. The point is that, that this is not somebody I want to just pass around to the king and so forth. I mean would be my plans for this, this couple. So it says, God spoke to the king, Abimelech, in a dream by night and said, I, I, I like the phrase in this, he says, behold, you, you touch her, uh, you're a dead man, all right? Uh, so uh, that's what he says, he says, but behold that hour, but a dead man, for the woman you've taken, she's a man's wife, all right? So you, you, you take that woman, you're a dead man, I'm just, just letting you know, all right? I, I don't want you touching that, that woman who you've taken. So here he, he's giving the king warning that this is not just some woman to take and do what he wants with. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister? And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me, Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Now what was Abimelech's reaction to God speaking to him in the dream? He says, hey, this isn't my fault. <laughs> he, he came and said this was his sister. She, she said that this is my brother. So... I mean, I, that's what I was told. I mean, I didn't tell that I wasn't told that they were married. So he said, I, I, I didn't do anything wrong, right? That, that I'm, you know, it's, it's, I'm innocent and so forth, and I'm having integrity in this, right? I mean, I didn't do anything wrong. I mean, they, this is what, what they told me, right? So, of course, God knows that. So in six, he says, yes, I know you did this integrity of your heart, and, and, that, and that's why I'm giving you a chance to, to make it right here. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm preventing you from sinning by telling you not to do this. Right? So he's giving them this, giving him this warning, right? Because otherwise he could just let him do whatever and then, and then you know, struck him down. But instead he's saying, listen, I don't want you to touch this woman. And he says, if you do, then, then you're going to die and, and, all, and your whole family's going to die, right? So I don't want you to touch this, this woman. It's, this man's a prophet, so this is his wife. So you leave her alone, send her back to her husband. 
And uh, you know, and then even even in seven, even though Abraham is messed up here somewhat, he says he's a prophet. He'll, he'll pray for thee, and and thou shalt live. All right, that he'll he'll say a prayer for you, and and then you, your household will be blessed. So do what's right, and you'll be blessed. But do what's wrong, and the, and this is the this is the penalty. All right. So he's giving him giving him this chance, which again is a good thing. I mean, it. I mean, I I would love you know. To have that opportunity all the time, right? If we're ever tempted to do something wrong or something, and God would speak to you, said, mm -hmm, "All right, don't don't do that, all right." And uh, it'd be good to have that heads up. Now, of course, with the Holy Ghost, we kind of get some of that, all right? We get a prompting, we get a feeling at times that this is not a good thing to do. But here, I mean, God spoke to him right in a dream, said, "Nope, this is somebody's wife. You touch her, it's it's a bad thing. So I, I want you to let, let her go, send her back to her husband, and then he'll pray for you, and you'll be blessed." Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears, and the men were sore afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee, that thou hast brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? So this is that the king uh, went to, to speak to Abraham or had him brought in. And uh, the king said, what are you doing, all right? Why did you do this? Why, why did you pass this woman off as your sister and, and you're getting me in trouble, all right? That uh, if somebody told his servants what happened, that they were afraid, all right? I mean, yeah, God's speaking, saying he's gonna, gonna do something bad to us if we, uh, if we continue here, all right? And then he says, you know, what, why'd you do this, all right? He says, so that was brought on me and my kingdom a great sin, all right? You've done things that really shouldn't have been done here. You, if, just by lying to me, you put me in a bad position where I could have really gotten in a, in a very difficult situation here, right? That uh, you, you, know, you should have told the truth, and I don't understand why you put me in this position, all right? So, rightly so, all right? He's, he's going based on his word, and you know, when, when you go on somebody's word and then you, you're uh, in a bad place, it's in the, you, you're right to say, well, what, why did you tell me this? I mean, I relied on your word, and this is where it brought me. So that, uh, you know, I didn't think you were a liar, but here I, I went based on what you said, and you, you got me in trouble. And Abraham said, Because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet, indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, This is thy kindness, which thou shalt show unto me, at every place whither we shall come, say of me, he is my brother. He gives really two answers here. Right? When the, the king asks him, why would you do this? I right? said, well, first of all, he says, the, the fear of God is not in this place. All right? And uh, so basically I was afraid all right, that this is not a godly place. So I was afraid that if I told you that she was my wife, that you would kill me. You'd kill me to, to, to take my, my wife. You know, never mind, by the way, that she's how old? She's like 90 years old. All right? So again, the... I guess maybe they look more attractive at that, at that age, but uh, yeah, that there was one with 90 years old, and yet here he's afraid that the, that the king's going to you know, kill him to, to get her for himself, all right? But, uh, so there was that, and, and now in 12, he says, you know what, and, but you know what, technically she is my sister, right? The, the, she's my half-sister, and uh, he says that uh, she is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, so it's a, it's a half-sister. So, again, as I was saying earlier, back then you were allowed to marry in different, different ways than today. I mean, today you wouldn't marry somebody even that's that close in the relationship to your uh, half-sister. But back then it was, it was okay, right? So here, that, that it was his wife, but yet she was also a half-sister. See, what, I mean, to me that's, uh, we'll say that's like what we call a half-truth, all right? So, that, uh, that, yeah, technically, I mean, she could be referred to as his sister, but she was really his wife. And so that, therefore, that was the, the bad position he put the king in. The king was not to, to take somebody who was somebody else's wife in, in that way. So, yeah, so even though technically it was his sister, but yet leaving out the part that she was his wife was still the wrong thing to do, all right? So that's, uh, yeah, so it was a lame explanation to say, well, yeah, technically she is my half-sister, all right? But that's, that's not really the point. The point was that he didn't mention that she was his wife and therefore put the king in a bad position. And, you know, I guess, again, the lesson to us is, you know, at times we can say something that's you know, technically true, but still misleading to somebody, right? And so that's, that's not really the, you know, what we should be doing, that, uh, to misleading people by saying 
Later on, people find out they've been misled. They say, well, well really, if, you know, this was really kind of true. And then, well, it doesn't mean anything if you misled somebody and put them in a bad, a bad place. All right? and so that's, that's what the king hears. So I don't think he was really, really buying that, that, that explanation. Okay, and, then, and, then, oh, and then just, just then in 13 said, yeah, you know, we, it is my half-sister, so therefore I, you know, we kind of agree when we go to other places that, that we're going to just say we're, we're brother and sister, right? introduce ourselves that way. But yet, again, it, it was not the point. The point was that he misled the king and put the king in a bad position where God had to speak to him to prevent him from, from sinning. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee, and with all other, thus was she reproved. The king, I mean, at least being, you know, perhaps a, a good sport about it, and also since God said this was a, a prophet, a, a man of God, so he, he gave him things. It says in 14, he took sheep and oxen, men servants, women servants, gave them all to Abraham, sent him, sent him back his wife, all right, to, gave him, uh, told him, if you want to live here in our land, pick out, pick out any place you want, and, and the, the, you know, you can live there, and uh, he gave him a thousand pieces of silver, so I mean, really, considering that Abraham came in and lied to him and got him in trouble, yet he was being, I'll say, a good sport about it, and saying, well, you know, we'll get and treat you like, like a man of God, a prophet, and we'll give you things, and basically, and, and, and go, all right, you know, take your wife, and, uh, and take her away from me, and get me out of trouble here, right, that the, I don't want to be in trouble with God, so you need to just just go wherever you need to go and uh, and be a, a, away from me, all right? And then he says in, to Sarah, sixteen, says, you know, I, again, I like how he says, I've given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. I can almost then picture him saying, you know, with, with the quotes, I've given your your brother, uh, you know, a thousand pieces of silver. So now, you know, it, so he should be all all set now. So uh, and he says, behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes, all right? In other words, he's He's helping, uh, you know, he's, he's using you to fool people here. So that's why she was reproved and saying, you know, you're really participating in something that's really not right here by, you know, going around saying that this is your brother when really it's your husband. You're, you're making people like me get in trouble. So he says, I'm, you know, I'm not happy about it. But, all right, God spoke to me, says so the prophet, so here you go. Here's all this stuff. Go ahead, go ahead and go now. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. So as you see these, these two verses at the end of the chapter, right, what had happened in the, during this period, again, however long it may have been, it says that uh, all the wombs of the household had been closed up. In other words, nobody was able to, to get pregnant at this time, which at least I believe we're talking about more than a couple days here. I mean, probably maybe some little period of time had, had gone by. All right, so now it says that Abraham prayed to, to God, and it says, and God healed Abimelech, I mean, of the, the, we assume that means he forgave him, because it didn't say he was sick, all right, and, and his whole household, and now suddenly they were all able to bear children again. So whatever this uh, condition was, or maybe it was sort of like, a, like a sort of a curse, was lifted, all right, at, at this time. And uh, it says, in the 18th, the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house because of Sarah, Abraham's wife, but now that, that, that was taken away, that was restored because of him did the right thing here, both in uh, sending Sarah back and also in, in, in treating the, the prophet good and giving him gifts that now he, his household was blessed. That whatever affliction or condition was upon them was lifted when Abraham prayed. So even as God has said, he'll, he'll pray for you and then you'll, you'll receive this, this blessing as a result of his prayer. So, so, he, so he, he, it turned out okay for him, even though he had to go through this, uh, this uh, episode to, to get there.